Hello people, I'm the Real Comic Book Gamer. Today I'm going to be showing off my comic book collection I've got right here. I've been asked a lot in the past to show this off before, and I did a little bit, but I've added a lot since, and I didn't show very much before when I did my room tour. But now, I decided it's a perfect opportunity to do it, because I got approached by the people at Jimmer to do a sponsorship video, and I looked into them and I said, yeah, you know, that looks pretty cool. If you don't know what Jimmer is, they're sort of like Facebook for collectors, so... It's just like, it's like a social media site for nerdy collectors, so if you collect anything, it doesn't even have to be like comic books or statues or anything like that. It could be Blu-rays, it could be Funko Pops, it could be comics, it could be whatever, if there's some, or movie posters, if you collect movie posters. Pretty much, if you collect anything at all, you can show it off on Jimmer and you can find a bunch of other people like yourself that collect things, and also you can put up that, hey... I'm looking for this, does anyone have this, and are they selling it? But yeah, it's a free app, you can sign up, and because of them, I'm able to do a giveaway for you guys, to where we're giving away a Darth Vader Sideshow collectible, which is worth, I believe it's priced at like 230 bucks, so it's not cheap, and it looks badass. Like, I want this thing so bad, it looks awesome. I've always wanted one of the Sideshow collectible hot toys, but they're too expensive for me, but because of Jimmer, I'm able to do this giveaway for you guys, so... The way you enter in is you sign up for the app, like, and through the link down below. It has to be through that link. So you can download the app through either the App Store on Apple Pro Apple devices or the Play Store on Android devices, or you can just go on the site if you just want to do it on your computer, but the app works better. And then you can get two additional entries by uploading your collectibles to the site, and I'll show you real quick how to do that. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how to add stuff to Jimmer. Obviously, you open the app, and then once you're in there, the top left, right next to Home, you're going to hit that, and that'll bring up a little toolbar-looking thing like this. You hit Dashboard, and you hit either My Items or My Collections. Either one works. Then you're going to hit the plus bottom in the bottom right. You hit Add an Item, assuming that's what you want to do. And then you choose what type of item it is. Mine is something I already have collected. And then you go to your camera roll, or you can take a picture from the app. And I selected the Golden Age Omnibus for Superman, because that's what I want to add picture looks good and then the top right you'll see the check mark all you got to do is click that and then you just you could add more photos if you want different angles of it or if it looks different on one side then you add the title of it of what it is it says superman golden age omnibus volume one so that's obviously what i put and then next it will ask you for a description of the item so you can just put whatever you want to describe it I just put, uh, this is where it all started because this is where it all started. This is the beginning of Superman, the Golden Age. And so, yeah, then you put that. And then after that, you're going to go and it's going to ask you what collection you want to put it in. As you can see, I have different collections I've created. You start out with gallery, but the others are ones you create. And then you can put it with a club if you want to. And I... I put it with the comics club and that'll just get it seen by more people you could add tags and thing like that But I don't, didn't want to take all day with showing you guys how to do it So I didn't add any tags or anything like that But yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it on how to add an item jimmer It's really simple and easy to do So yeah, as you can see it's really easy to upload an item and show off your collection So again how to enter the giveaway is you have to sign up for the link in the description down below And then after that if you want two more additional entries you can upload two items to the to Jimmer and that gives you two more entries. You can upload as many items as you like, but only two will actually count towards more giveaway entries. So yeah, you can get three entries. So basically it's like a raffle and you're three times as likely to actually get it if you add two more items to it. So yeah, again, it's a free app. It's like Facebook for uh, collectors and I think it's really cool and I'll have mine linked in the description down below but also my profile because I've got no friends on there and I'm going to be showing off a lot more of my collection that I'm not even going to be showing off today on there and a bunch of my Blu-rays and single issues and things so if you want to see more of my collection definitely check out my profile I, I want to have some friends on there and I, right now I've got none so yeah that'd be pretty cool but this giveaway is going to be going mm -hmm. on for about like 30 days so you have time but yeah I urge you guys definitely go check it out it's really cool it's free and because of them I was able to do this giveaway so definitely show some support to them by doing this because this is awesome that they're able to do this giveaway for for you guys anyways now is now that you guys know about Jimmer and how to sign up, let's get into my collection real quick. Let's go into, let's show off all this stuff that I've got. So this is probably like 75% of my actual comic book collection because, as most of you guys know, I moved from Florida to Washington State. And so I wasn't able to ship everything out here because it's expensive to ship all your stuff. And also I have a lot of digital comics. So this is roughly 75% of my actual comics. So uh, and it's not even all organized like I would like it because of, I did just move again. I've moved twice since I've been in Washington. I've moved uh, a bit, so yeah, I haven't had a chance to organize everything. I haven't taken the time, but this is my Superman shelf. This is where I got all my Superman stuff, so 
right here we can see I got Superman the Black Ring Volume 1 Volume 2 which is a Lex Luthor story that is really good it's done by Paul Cornell which I have no clue what he's writing now but it's fantastic some of the best Lex Luthor stories really interesting stuff Lex Luthor in, in like the end achieves all power and then just gets all broken up about it because of something Superman does that I won't spoil and then we have Superman Birthright pretty good but I think really overrated Superman Secret Origin, my favorite Superman origin. The entire run for uh, Superman Earth 1, which I'm assuming we're going to get more because I, I think the like, sales for it were really good, so I think we're getting more volumes. But yeah, really enjoyed that series. Superman Lois and Clark, which is the road to rebirth. It led, led to Superman Rebirth. And then we've got some other stuff like some Superman Rebirth right here with Action Comics. That uh, Superman Doomsday Wars got Doomsday Hunter Prey, where it kicks uh, Darkseid's ass, but then everyone's like, oh, it's a clone of Darkseid. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's so stupid. And then you got Superman for Tomorrow, which is a Brian Azzarello story that's just, eh, it's not that great. It's overrated. The art by Jim Lee is worth the price of admission alone. Just look at that. It's so amazing. Even just the covers are oh, so good. And you got Superman Art of Worlds at War, which is okay. I was just excited because it's in X, but it's not that good. Superman vs. Darkseid, which is just a collection of uh, like a bunch of different stories featuring Superman and Dark going against Darkseid. Superman Red Sun, really good Superman book. I do think it's a tad overrated, though, in my opinion. And then we have Superman Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, which is when Alan Moore wrote Superman for a bit. So it's it's a really good, interesting story. Um, I know a lot of people were surprised not to see that on my top ten Superman stories, but I just didn't think it should really be on there. And we got Superman Doomsday. Uh... Which, this was a pretty cool story. This was, I believe that was the one... Wait, hold on. This is the other part of Hunter Prey. Yeah, these are the other volumes of Hunter Prey. And then we got Superman Man of Steel Volume 1. Volume 2, 3, 5, and 6. Because they're hard to find. I bought, like, all these on Amazon. And the other ones are hard to find. So, yeah, that's why I don't have the entire collection of Man of Steel. My cat is going crazy attacking a shoe right now. And he just stops as soon as I point the camera at him. What are you doing? Okay, back to the collection. Uh, we got Superman New Krypton, which uh, I have the first, like, I think it was like the first two volumes in um, in issues, actually, because like, I bought it for, on eBay for like 10 bucks. It was really cheap to get like all the issues. Hello, buddy. I don't know if you guys hear me out. Um, we got Last Stand of Krypton. We got more New Krypton stuff, which is a really good run by like James Robinson and some others, and I really enjoyed it, and I like the storyline. Uh, we got Superman Reign of Doomsday, which is eh. It's Superman, the uh, Jose Luis, Luis Garcia Lopez collection, which the stories in this, some are good, some are and eh, The stories aren't too great, but the art is fantastic. It is amazing. I love the art. It's so good, and it's some classic Superman. We got Superman, the Golden Age Omnibus, Volume 1, which is where it all started for Superman. This is great. Some classic Superman stuff, like the classic Superman. This is where he began. Then we got the best, I think the only actually New 52 Superman story I have in like a collection, a hardcover or soft. And uh, Superman for All Seasons, All-Star Superman, Superman Legion of Superheroes, Death of Superman, Superman Ending Battle, which is a really fun Superman story that I think is underrated, Superman Brainiac, Superman American Alien, Superman Up, Up, and Away, my favorite Superman story of all time, Superman Last Sun, Superman Panic in the Sky, where he recruits Deathstroke to be sort of like a general of his army to go against Brainiac, which is a pretty cool story. Then we got Escape from Bizarro World, Superman vs. Uh, the Incredible Hulk vs. Superman, which was an interesting story. It was okay. It wasn't bad. It was better than most crossovers. Most crossovers between Marvel and DC aren't very good. Then you got Superman in the Name of Gog, which has some good art, but for the most part isn't very good. Superman Exile, which is a fantastic story by Dan Jurgens. It's a mix of a bunch of stories, but uh, overall I enjoyed it. You got Then we get into Superman Batman. So we got Superman Batman Public Enemies, amazing. Superman Batman uh, Finest Worlds, which is the one where Superman switches powers with Batman, so Superman gets nothing and Batman gets powers, and Batman goes crazy and almost kills Nightwing and Bane and a lot of other stuff, and it just, it's just, it's really good. Then we got the only Superboy book I have, Superboy the Boy of Steel, which I talked about before, which goes into how sick and twisted Lex Luthor is. Then we've got the whole JLA versus uh, Avengers crossover. I don't even know if I have these in order yet. Yeah. So, yeah, look at that cover, though. It's so good. I know I'm talking real fast. I know a lot of people get on me for talking fast, but sorry, it's just the way I am, and I'm not used to doing these types of videos either, so sorry. We got Flash Rebirth, original Rebirth, and then Volume 1 of New Flash Rebirth. Then we got Trinity, 
And we've got some Wonder Woman stories. Wonder Woman Blood, which is Volume 1 of her New 52 run. JLA, A League of One, which is a Wonder Woman story. And this is basically a Wonder Woman story. Justice League Dark Side War was pretty much... Uh, she was the main character. Uh, but it was, it was really good. And then we have Green Arrow by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino, which is what first introduced me to those guys. And it's fantastic. It's so good. Like, the only good thing to come from Green Arrow in the New 52, besides, like, the end with Benjamin Piercy. We got Final Crisis, Final Crisis Companion, which I highly recommend you buy the Companion if you read Final Crisis. It definitely adds a lot. It actually adds a bunch to Martian Manhunter's death. Because when you read Final Crisis, uh, Martian Manhunter's death is kind of like a footnote. But in this, they actually go into it a lot. And so, yeah, the Companion actually helped, and I actually enjoyed it. Then we got a bunch of single issues right here. Let's just pull something random out. What do we got here? We got uh, Night of the Living Deadpool, which is my favorite Deadpool storyline. We've got Nightwing New 52. We've got Brain Conquest. So yeah, a bunch of random, bunch of random uh, single issues because I'm Old Man Logan. And then like family photos right there. Uh, this actually, because I, I bought this when I first moved to, uh, to Washington. I bought this bookshelf from Ikea for like, I think it was like 20, 30 bucks. And during the move from where I used to live to the current apartment, uh, I, I lost a screw. I don't, yeah, you see, it's, wait, is this still, no, I'm, it's in the back, it's in the back, I'm, I lost a screw, so I just use these books to hold up this shelf, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, so, the books I'm using are Avengers vs. X-Men vs., which just has a bunch of the battles that happened, I got Absolute Luthor and Absolute Joker, which is booked by Az Azarello and uh, Lee Biermo, or however you pronounce it, and the Luthor book is amazing, the Joker book's okay, some people really like it, I think it's okay. Avatar, The Last Airbender, The Search, which details what happened to, uh, Aang, not Aang, <laughs> Zuko's mom. So, it was, it was pretty good. Nothing that special, but I liked it because it filled in the gap. Because I always wanted to know what happened to Zuko's mom, and then they tell us. I was like, oh, okay. X-Men Schism, which is sort of like X-Men Civil War-ish. Uh, X-Men God Loves Man Kills. X-Men Dark Phoenix, which are some just classic, uh, Claremont X-Men stuff. We got X-Men Genesis, which is which is pretty good, and I actually have an interesting story behind that, because I got this book for free after I'd been going to my local comic shop back in Florida for about, like, two months. He's just like, hey, this book isn't selling. I noticed you buy a lot of X-Men. You want it? I was like, yes, please, and it was so cool. Uh, then we got, like, all the World War Hulk stuff. Actually, it's split up over here as well, like, all the spinoffs and stuff, because, uh, I just, I really liked World War Hulk. It's my favorite Hulk storyline. I didn't care for, um, what was it? Planet Hulk. I didn't care for Planet Hulk, honestly. I let it, I, I rented that from the library and read it a while ago, and I didn't care for it, but World War Hulk's great. We got some Hawkeye stuff. We got on the entire run, except for, I think it's like Volume 1. What is it? Yeah, Volume 1 I have on Comixology. I don't have a uh, physical. I'll probably get it eventually just to complete it. I got Hawkeye Blind Spot, which is another good Hawkeye story. Uh, I got some Guardians of the Galaxy, which is eh. Got Amazing Spider-Man by J. Michael Krasinski, I think that's his name. Then we got Craven's Last Hunt, fantastic. Where are my other volumes of Spider-Man? Again, not everything is uh in is like oh yeah, over here's the other volumes. But uh yeah, not everything's in order. Then I got Craven's Last Hunt, which is one of my favorite Marvel books of all time. We got uh, Mark Millar's run on Spider-Man. And then we got some Star Wars books. We got the entire run by Kieran Gillen, or Gillen, however you pronounce his name, on Darth Vader, which is really good. And I highly recommend any Star Wars fan read. We've got Shattered Empire, which is pretty good. Tells the, like what happened right after the Battle of Endor. Then we got two volume, well, volume three and four of Star Wars, because I read all of issues up to volume three and four, and then I was like, okay, I'm just going to collect in volumes now, which is what I'm doing. And I need to collect volume five. I believe it's out right now. Um... We got some Avenger stuff, some Daredevil stuff. We got Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, Daredevil Born Again, which is the best Daredevil book of all time and one of the best Marvel books of all time. We got uh, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. We got Daredevil by Mark Wade, Volume 1. We got Daredevil Back in Black, uh, Volume 1 and 2, which is Charles Soule, the current run that's going on, with uh, Ron Garney, who's a fantastic artist, definitely one of my favorites, and I'm so happy he's on it. We got a bunch of Wolverine stuff. He's my favorite Marvel hero, so, of course, I got a bunch of Wolverine stuff. I got, like, Volume 2, 3, and 4 by, uh, by Jason Aaron. I've got Old Man Logan, got uh, the Chris Claremont Mandriport Knights collection of Wolverine, got Wolverine by Daniel Way, which I believe collects like the first two volumes. I don't remember. It collects like a lot of random Daniel Way stuff. Then I got more Daniel Way Wolverine stuff, which was his run on Origins, which for the most part is pretty good. Then it sort of like gets a little weird. Um, Enemy of the State, which is part of Mark Millar's run. Uh, we got The Best There Is, which is an interesting story that's very gory and very violent. And the art could have been better, but I, but I like the writing. 
Ja- Japan's Most Wanted, which is another Jason Aaron story. This one wasn't very good. It was just, eh. We got uh, Weapon X, which is fantastic. A really good story, and the art is so good. The art in this book is just, uh, it's, it's amazing. Wolverine Logan, which I had heard was fantastic. I read it, and I was so disappointed. It wasn't bad, but it was like maybe 6 out of 10 territory. It was not that good. I heard it was amazing, but it wasn't. Then they have Wolverine by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller, which is possibly the best Marvel book of all time. It's so good. Then we got Wolverine Weapon X, which is more stuff by Jason Aaron. We've got some, uh, we got Wolverine, which was, this was Jeff Loeb's run, which had a lot to do with Wolverine and Sabretooth. Then we got Marvel Universe versus Wolverine, which was a pretty cool story. So my phone died, but I'm back now. (laughs) But yeah, so, now I just showed you guys all that bookshelf. Now onto this bookshelf. We got some Green Arrow stuff. I got uh, The Longbow Hunters, but Volume 1 and 2 of that. Then I got Green Arrow Year 1, which is Green Arrow's origin story. Then we got Green Arrow Road to Jericho, which is the best Green Arrow book I've ever read. I, again, like I said, I don't have it organized, because otherwise I'd have this Green Arrow book down here with this stuff, but I don't I don't have that organized yet. But, uh, yeah. And I got The Archer's Quest, which is really cool, and talks a lot about, like, comic book heroes' deaths in it, and, like, what happens between, like, Barry, Oliver, and Hal, like, when each of them dies, what's the protocol, uh, is an interesting story. Then I got Nightwing Volume 1, which is a collection of, uh, Chuck Dixon and Dennis O'Neill's run on Nightwing, and it's pretty cool. And I got Nightwing The Target, which is a t- Chuck Dixon Nightwing story where he goes and he's this vigilante called The Target for a bit. And I got Grayson, which was, you know, right after Forever Evil when he couldn't be Nightwing anymore. And I got Volume 1 and 2 of Nightwing Rebirth. Then we got Judas Contract right here, which is the best Titan story of all time, one of the best graphic novels of all time. We got New Teen Titans, Titans Family Reunion. We got right here The Return of Wally West in DC Rebirth. We got 75th Anniversary Collection, which is really cool that DC did for Batman. I wish they would have done something like this with Superman, but from what I saw, they didn't. Where they collect, like, three of uh, three of the most popular and, like, greatest Batman stories of all time, which is Batman Hush, which is my favorite Bruce Wayne Batman storyline of all time. We got The Court of Owls, which is a fantastic story and one of the best uh, Batman stories from the New 52. Dark Knight Returns, incredibly overrated, not a fan, but that's the only reason I have it is because it was in this collection, yeah, it's a cool collection. It was only like 25 bucks, something like that. So for these three books, 25 bucks, that's pretty good. Um, at least that's how much I got for Amazon. I don't know what like retail price is. We got Superman Endgame. I, Superman Endgame. Batman Endgame, which is, of course, another fantastic book. Zero Year. We got, uh, this was Paul Dini's run. Some of Paul Dini's run on uh, Batman when it was Dick Grayson's Batman. More of that right here. Killing Joke, obviously. Gotham by Gaslight. Year One. Zero Year. City Vals. All-Star Batman Robin, which is just so bad, it's good. It's so atrocious that it's fun to read, because it's just such a bad book. Then we got Battle for the Cow, Grant Morrison's run on Batman Robin, which is the only time I really actually like Damian Wayne, and besides that, not a fan. Uh, death in, uh, a Death in the Family, uh, Batman Streets of Gotham, which is more of Paul Dini's run on Batman when it was Dick Grayson's Batman, Bat Black Mirror, which is my favorite Batman book of all time. It's where uh, Dick Grayson is Batman. It's so good. Uh, Batman Nightfall, Big, heavy, thick book, huge, but it's it's pretty good. It's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of quality in there, but man, it's a long read. And then you got Batman: The Wrath. You got Batman: Under the Red Hood, another one of the best Batman stories of all time. Batman: R.I.P. Batman Chronicles Volume Six. I got this for Christmas from my aunt one year, and she got this for me. It's just a collection of the old uh, the old Batman stories, and it's really good. Uh, I just love reading classic Batman's, like sort of the stuff that inspired the Adam West series. And then you got Death of the family uh earth one volume two i've read volume one at the library but volume two i bought because it was a riddler story and it was so good i liked it a lot better than volume one volume one was pretty good as well though and the art in both of them is oh, so good it's by gary frank and then you got hush returns which i think is underrated a lot of people didn't like it but i actually liked it and then we got some punisher stuff we got punisher born which is his pre-origin just his vietnam days and we got punisher welcome back frank which is just classic punisher that everyone, well not like classic because it's like early 2000s, but everyone should own Welcome Back Frank, that is a Punisher fan I 100% believe that, they got Punisher Man of Stone, which does some Punisher Max stuff they got uh, Nathan Edmondson's run on Punisher, which is so good, and the art by Mitch Jared, I I can't remember how to pronounce his last name, but it's 
oh my gosh, the art is so amazing, and, and the writing is fantastic as well. This is when he goes to the West Coast, and he fights, like, cartel guys and stuff, and it's really good. And then we have Rick Remainder's run on X-Force, uh, volume, uh, well, Omnibuses. We got the Volume 1 Omnibus and the Volume 2 Omnibus, both really good. My favorite run on X-Force. I think he did some fantastic stuff. It's so cool. They got Humans vs. X-Men. Not a fan. I read the first issue, and I was like, man, that was pretty good. I'll pick it up and trade. And then after that, it's just downhill from there, and it's not very good. We got Thanos Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire, which I want to pick up the other volumes when they come out. I think Volume 2 is about to come out, or just came out, something like that. Immortal Iron Fist. Only Iron Fist I have. Only Iron Fist you need to read, as far as I'm concerned. It's so good, at least from what I've read. But yeah, it's so good. It's just, uh, there's not much more I can say about it. You definitely need to read it. If you're a fan of Iron Fist or you're interested in him at all, this is what the show needs to learn to do, is this. This series right here. They got Uncanny X-Men, which is which is good, nothing too special. Rage of Ultron, not very good, not worth the money. But like, I bought it when it first came out because like, hey, I'm excited for it. Not very good. Then we got this is where like all the indie stuff is, and then some other obviously non-indie stuff. But we got. G.I. Joe IDW Volume 1, which is Chuck Dixon's run on G.I. Joe. We got G.I. Joe The Last Laugh, which is one of the most underrated graphic novels of all time. So good. They got G.I. Joe uh, Cobra Civil War. And they got Cobra Cobra Civil War. Uh, America's Elite. Cobra Command, which is after Cobra Civil War. Um, once, like, I think his name was a Crake or something like that takes over. Uh, it was really good. All this stuff is actually really good. Then we got Snake Eyes Cobra Civil War Volume 1 and 2. Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Target Snake Eyes, which is a fantastic book. Uh, G.I. Joe Storm Shadow Solo, which I wish they do more storm, solo Storm Shadow stuff because I really love this book from uh, Devil's Due Publishing. Then you got uh, G.I. Joe Best of Storm Shadow and Best of Snake Eyes. Uh, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, I never read and the only reason I got it was because it was in a bundle with G.I. Joe books. Like, you had to buy it. It was on eBay. It was like, I think it was like 12 bucks or something. It came with like, to, I think it came with like Volume 1 and 2 of Cobra Civil War and then it all they also threw that in there. It's like, I don't care about that. So, it, yeah, it just came with it. Then we got Deadly Cast Volume 1. I need to collect the rest of this. I love Deadly Class. I did a video talking about my favorite indie comics. I had Deadly Class on there because it's so good. We got Witches. We got Ed Brubaker and uh, Sean Phillips Fade Out, which is a fantastic indie story. So good. Um, I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but yeah. Uh, you got Five Ghosts, which I need to collect the rest of as well. Cal, which I wish they'd do more of, but I think it ended at Volume 2. Then you've got uh, Saga. I'll probably read more of it. I liked it, but I do think it's a bit overrated. Kill or Be Killed. I need to collect the more of those. Uh, Descender. Black Hammer, which I think Volume 2 just came out. It's about to come out or something like that. I'm going to definitely pick that up. Sweet Tooth Volume 1 and Volume 2. I really want to pick up the rest of that because it's probably my favorite indie book I've ever read. Then we've got um, Abaddon, which is the only Kickstarter I've ever supported, which is written by Justin Gray and uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, which is the guys behind this dude, Jonah Hex, that wrote a lot of his stuff. I mean, they didn't create him, but they wrote like uh, the quintessential Jonah Hex, in my opinion. This is old school, like 70s Jonah Hex stuff. And then this is all Justin Gray, Jimmy Palmiotti, Jonah Hex stuff, which is really good. And then right here, you got Watchmen. You got some Alan Moore stuff with Watchmen, V for Vendetta. I love Watchmen. I think V for Vendetta is pretty good, but I don't think it's a must-read, in my opinion. I don't think it's, like, something that you have to read. I just, I didn't think it was that amazing. It was pretty good, but I didn't think it was that amazing. Then we got so, a bunch of Captain America stuff. Then we got Ed Brubaker's run on Winter Soldier. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I got more single issues right here. Like, let's see. Let's pull something up. Jonah Hex. Let's pull something. Deathstroke. That's just, uh, Superman, Batman, then you saw Nightwing before that, yeah, so a bunch of random stuff in there, and then I've got some Blu-rays over here, and some back issues that I bought the other day, well, not the other day, like, like a couple weeks ago, uh, Judge Dredd and some Magneto and stuff, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and again, if you want to win a Sideshow Collectible Darth Vader, or if you think that just the idea of Jimmer is pretty cool, or if you want to hang out with me on there and see my collection, like more of my collection, like a bunch of those single issue stuff that I skimmed over, I will be posting on Jimmer, so if you want to see my collection and be my friend on there, make sure to add me and link the description to uh, sign up for Jimmer, and you can be in the giveaway for the Sideshow Collectible Darth Vader, so again, Giveaway is going to be going on for a month. Sign up and that's how you'll get a you'll get an entry in the giveaway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.